What's up my art peeps? In the last video, we went over some steps on how to get started selling paintings online. We, we decided on how we were gonna price the paintings, or I decided on how I was gonna price my paintings, and what sort of e-commerce platform I wanted to use to get started with selling my paintings. The next thing we need to figure out is how to professionally photograph our artwork. So that's what you saw me setting up here in that very beginning intro. I'm gonna go over all these little things that I've set up here and basically the steps that I'm taking to try and get this figured out. Just keep in mind, this is my first time trying all of this stuff. So we're gonna do some experimenting to see what ways there are to take pictures that make the end result of the picture look more professional, both for the storefront and so that way we can get quality art prints out of the pictures that we take. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here we are. We have our setup here. Basically what we got going on is, uh, here's my studio lights. These are called Neewer lights, N-E-E-W-E-R. And these are typically what I use to light my shots for when I'm filming. But in way of getting a good picture of this painting right here, uh, it's definitely recommended to use what's called light diffusers, which this is what I call the cheap and lazy man's light diffuser. So I already had a couple of microphone stands, which is what these are attached to right now. And you can take either a white sheet, a thin white sheet, or sometimes people recommend a shower curtain, I guess a clear shower curtain. And basically the idea is to diffuse the light. So it's basically meant to break up the light so that way there's not as many hard shadows. So that's kind of the idea of this setup. This right here is just weights in a bag because I have a very crappy microphone stand that can't even hold up a sheet. And you'll see these are clips, little clamps that I, I got on here. So this is just a solution I came up with so that way I can actually do this video and uh, basically do some testing. Ultimately, I likely will need to invest in making a better type of diffuser at some point because these aren't just good for uh, setting up uh, pictures for my storefront, but also good for doing shots like this and taking some footage. If you've been subscribed to the YouTube channel for some time now, you may have been seeing me taking some steps here and there to try and improve the quality of the footage. This would be another step for me to take in getting my lighting better. So I definitely want to either start using what I have now in my next video, as you saw me using in the very beginning there, it definitely gets a better lighting on my face, less shadows. I think it does good. So that's totally besides the point of this video. Uh, <laughs> next after this, after, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention too is it's pretty important to have the lights at a 45 degree angle on either side of the canvas. So if you don't know what a 45 degree angle is, you probably should go back to sixth grade algebra. I don't think I should have to explain that. You should know. <laughs> so with that little bit of the setup here covered, let's actually try and take some pictures. We're gonna basically do some experimenting on taking pictures with this camera. I did get some specific settings to try and use on my camera for exactly what we're trying to do today. So ultimately my, my main purpose is to simply get quality shots from my storefront. I do also wanna double down on this work and try and get quality shots for print on demand products. Because as I said in the last video, I was really interested in saving 50 of the slots of my storefront for other types of products, specifically print on demand products I'm particularly interested in trying. Yeah, so I don't know how well this is going to work for print on demand products, but at the very least, I should be able to get some quality uh, product shots for the storefront itself. So that way we can finish setting up the storefront and I can move on to other stuff and make more paintings. <laughs> Cause I'd rather be making paintings, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have to switch over to the shot from the camera phone, which actually you saw in the very beginning. So hopefully we can get decent audio with that. If not, I'll have to do some sort of voiceover. Here we are with the camera settings set. So I went through a number of settings provided by a guy named Steve Masterson in a video that I'll link in the description down below. Uh, I'm not gonna go over how to do all the settings. I'll just run through them real quick. He does a pretty good job in his video telling you how to set that up, especially if you have an M50 camera like this one. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a good thing to check out. First thing we did was set the white balance. So I use this picture right here with this sheet of white paper to do a custom setting on the white balance. 
which is right here. You want to press that symbol, that funny looking symbol right there. Go into here, select the picture as the, this is the picture that we selected. So we set set and then that sets the white balance for that. And then we got the ISO set to 100, the f-stop set to f11. We have the camera setting at AV, which I believe stands for aperture or something. So AV up here. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much the basics of it. So this is an autofocus. This is manual focus. I don't know why when I switch it to manual focus, it does this weird thing with the image, but when I take the picture, uh, it actually ends up like this. So this is the autofocus picture. This is the manual focus picture. I think both those are actually really good. They should turn out all right. So what I'm gonna do next is I'll mount the camera and I'm gonna take some uh, up close shots for the storefront and try and get some different variations of this picture so that way it's not just one single picture. We'll likely crop out some of this stuff. Steve in his video goes over some things to do in Lightroom. I don't think I'll be covering that in this video. I'll probably try it. I'll, I'll do a little dabbling on it, but uh, let's just keep it with the experimentation. So once I get done with this camera here, we'll go ahead and actually try, just for comparison, we'll try and do some pictures with the iPhone that I'm using right now to see how it compares to the M50 camera and what kind of quality pictures you can get with a simple smartphone like an iPhone. The iPhone has a pretty good camera on it. It's, it's a 4K camera, so it does a pretty good job. So if all you have is an iPhone, we'll have to see what sort of results you can get. And especially if you're just using it for a storefront, I mean, it's good to have good quality pictures so that way you can actually sell your paintings, but it, I don't think it has to be totally perfect. It doesn't have to be totally professional, especially when you're just getting started. The whole point here is to keep taking steps forward and with every step forward you take, just try and improve that 1% more and get just a little bit better. For a while now, I've been kind of reluctant to do the storefront just because I've been feeling a little reserved about not knowing how to do a lot of this stuff. But now that I'm taking these steps, it's like, what was I afraid of? I, I mean, all I have to do is take the steps and the pathway unfolds. Before I know it, hopefully I'm gonna be selling paintings. Let's go ahead and switch views here and get some different shots. So a couple of things to note about that sequence of shots you just saw me taking. First off, in the very beginning of the B-roll footage that we just ran through there, I took the camera off the stand, thinking I would be able to get some good close-up shots that way. Pretty much every picture that I took in that particular way came out blurry. So I definitely don't recommend doing that. That's why later you saw me put it back on the stand and move closer, and then just take a picture from the stand and take a step back. So. You had the countdown, the little timer countdown, so that way it's not capturing any shake from when you press the button. So that's definitely a really important thing to note and think about. The other thing as well is I did take some footage of myself taking pictures with the iPhone. I, I guess I must have accidentally deleted that footage. I don't really know what happened to it. Maybe I didn't even hit the record button. But uh, yeah, so I didn't get that footage for you to view, but we're gonna take a look at all of those pictures right now to compare how they look. I've already done some editing and experimenting in Lightroom and on the iPhone just to see how they compare with each other. It helped make me realize that what we're ultimately going for, especially for a storefront picture, is the most accurate representation of the painting that we can get. I don't want the colors to really be distorted in any way. I want the colors that a person sees in the storefront on the painting to be the same colors that I see with my naked eye in real life. That way, when they get the painting, they're not disappointed by what they're getting. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and hop over to the screen recording view. All right, so here we have uh, a number of pictures. So you see these things here, the one where we can't actually see the picture. I actually forgot to mention earlier, I did change one of the settings on the camera, so that way the picture that I was taking was in raw format. Instead of JPEG, I wanted raw format. 
RAW apparently retains the most information of an image you can capture. So it's definitely better to have that in way of editing and getting a quality result that closely represents the painting that we're trying to take a picture of. All of these other pictures that we see here on the screen, these are all JPEGs. Uh, these, these two I took with the camera for the white balance. I wasn't sure if I should have done those in JPEG or RAW. I don't really know about that, but I ended up doing them in JPEG just because I hadn't changed the setting on the camera just yet to RAW. And then the rest of these are JPEGs that I took with the iPhone. So just for comparison, all right, so this picture right here, I, I took with the camera, the M50, with the special settings that we have, but then I downloaded it to my iPhone and I did a little bit of editing on the iPhone. And this is how the picture came out. I used basically the auto editing features of the iPhone and I slightly adjusted some things, but uh, that's pretty much it. I didn't do a whole lot other than the auto feature. This one is the one that I took with the iPhone itself and then I edited it on the iPhone as well. And you see there's a pretty big difference between these two in way of the color variations. And then this particular picture I took with the camera, which it's actually the same picture as this one, but I did some editing in Lightroom. Now, comparing all of them to the painting that we have over here, like if I switch from this shot and even, I don't know if this shot is actually even capturing it that well because judging by what I see on the screen there, it looks like maybe this is making the whole room look brighter than it actually does look to my eyes. So it's, it's really hard to kind of capture an accurate image, whether it's in video or in picture, but let's just hop over here to Lightroom. And this particular shot right here in Lightroom, I feel like this is probably the most accurate representation that I've done so far of this particular painting. So basically what I'm learning is you gotta play around with the settings. You gotta have the painting pretty much right next to you when you're doing your editing, especially when you're new to all this like I am. You just wanna basically do like what we always do with painting and everything is some experimentation until you start figuring it out. Personally, the thing I have to keep reminding myself is this is the very first painting that I'm doing like this. So I'm confident as time goes on and I do more of these paintings, especially since I'm about to do 50 of them for the storefront, that I'll get a better handle on how to do this accurately and get representations of my paintings that closely resemble and match the actual painting. And then at that point we can start doing, uh, maybe we can do another video where I actually send some of these renderings to be printed either for print on demand or maybe I'll do a local print shop so that way I can actually have prints and maybe do like a limited edition run of signed prints, stuff like that. So we'll, we'll continue to experiment with this stuff over time. I'll do more videos so that way you can learn as I learn. I just wanna share the things that I learned with you on how to make, market, and monetize art. Now that we've covered some of the basics of monetizing art and some of the things that I'm learning about it, hopefully in the next video we can get back to painting. If you do want to learn some techniques on abstract painting, check out this playlist right here. I'll see you in the next one.